Today is Sunday, March 22nd, 2020. I'm Lights Camera Jackson. Welcome to LCJ Live. Hope you're all doing okay. Staying safe, staying healthy during this crazy time. We're back here for another new episode right here live, LCJ Live. You know, we began this show on April 15th, I believe, 2018. So we're coming up on two years of LCJ Live. And when I was approached to do a show, an online show once a week, and I was approached and it was basically like, all right, what day do you want to do the show? And what time do you want to do the show? And I said, I got it. Sunday's at noon, Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, because you'll have breaking news every single time we come on the air, and that's the box office. The, the box office results for the weekend, the weekend estimates come out every Sunday, sometimes 10, as early as 10.30 a.m. Eastern, depending on the movie, all the way up until noon Eastern. You have breaking news every single Sunday when we come on here for LCJ Live. But after almost two years and about 100 shows, we've done more than 100 shows of LCJ Live over the last two years, which is great, uh, nearly every single weekend. You know, after all of that, this is one of the only times, and maybe the first time, where I can't tell you what the weekend box office results are, because there are no weekend box office results. On Thursday or Friday, heading into the weekend, the studios announced, along with Comscore and BoxOffice.com, BoxOfficeMojo, everybody announced, we're not going to have weekend box office results, we're not going to have daily box office results for the majority of movies anymore. Because there are so few theaters left open in the country right now. Uh, to, why bother? Why need the box office results? No new movies are coming out in theaters. And why do we need the box office results? It's a really interesting time. In the past week, theater chains like Regal and AMC, Cinemark, Landmark, you name them, have closed uh, all their locations across North America because of the coronavirus. Uh, it's a really... Uh, it's a really interesting time to be a movie fan and a really interesting time to be a box office person. I've been following the box office, the weekend results, very closely for almost 15 years. That's right, even before I began as a film critic, as Lights Camera Jackson in January of 2006, about six months before, I started following the box office, the weekend box office results, uh, because I would see them cut out in my newspaper. In fact, let me, hang on just one second here. This book contains the weekend box office results for every movie of the last 15 years. Take a look at this. You open it up, and it's all these different pages. But here is the first one right here from June of 2005. Batman Begins, in its second weekend, won the weekend box office with 26.8 million dollars and I'm sort of trying to see right now when it didn't show up in the newspaper sometimes I'd have to fill it in myself but you go through all of this and it's a little bit of film history it's a little bit you've got the seven weeks that Avatar was number one and all those different box office results you've got so many movies and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them you know some people collect sports cards I collected the weekend box office result cutouts from my local newspapers and they're all in here from the last 15 years. You can open up a random page and Monsters University, 82 million. You can go through this whole thing. I treasure this. I treasure this. But now, now we're in a place where there is no weekend box office, where I can't be adding little cutouts and snippets to that collection. When will the weekend box office return? How many months from now? We don't know. How many weeks from now? Will there be 10 movies to fill a top 10 list? a really interesting time. You are the box office king, LCJ. Thank you for doing this. Says Bob Hall and Future Cannon and Brett Harity. LCJ history. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. I've had that for 15 years. And you can go through that and maybe someday if, if I get stuck in my house completely, maybe we'll go through some of the weeks and the numbers there and go through all the pages. It is a little bit of film history in there because not all of the results are accurate. Anyway, they're just estimates. All the money changed. Places changed. Uh, when it came to the top 10 lineup. So yeah, I've been following the box office for 15 years. And now there is no box office this weekend. First time ever. Nothing. Nada. Because there aren't enough movies in the studios didn't want to do them. Uh, scrapbook of ticket stubs. There's a, yeah, people collect all kinds of different things. I collect the weekend box office results. Or at least I did. Maybe it'll come back. Maybe it'll return. Who knows? 
But uh, for once, I cannot give you these results right here, right now on LCJ Live. People are wondering if I am practicing social distancing, and yes, I am. Uh, I'm not completely confined to my house 100%, but about 95%. I mean, over the last week or so, I have been uh, home here watching a bunch of new movies. I could tell you uh, the other night uh, I watched some movies. We'll get into that in a second. If you're wondering why I have the two Minions here, it's because Minions, The Rise of Gru is one of the latest movies to delay because of the coronavirus. And not specifically because it, it had the July 3 slot and people don't think the movie theaters are going to be open by then. They very well could be. But because the Illumination Paris studio is closed and maybe the uh, California one will be soon, they just can't get the movie done in time. So that's why Minions 2 has to be delayed. Unfortunately, maybe our little friends here will be out around Christmas time in theaters. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. All right, so over the last week, since we were last here on LCJ Live last Sunday, uh, I've watched, I think, five uh, new movies at home, kind of at-home screenings. The first movie I watched Monday night is called The Last Thing He Wanted. It's one I wanted to catch up on from Netflix. Anne Hathaway, Ben Affleck, Willem Dafoe. Um, she plays a journalist. It, you know, it starts out okay, but it goes a little bit all over the place by the second half and a little corny in spots as well. So I wanted to catch up on that. Then I watched a film called The Willoughbys on Tuesday. The Willoughbys is a new animated comedy uh, film uh, based on a book, and it's coming out on Netflix April 22nd. Here we are, a month out from the release of The Willoughbys. I can't tell you my opinion on it. I'm embargoed. I'm embargoed on a lot of these movies. But I watched The Willoughbys. It is, uh, if you like Looney Tunes, if you like the zaniness and the zip-fast nature of the Looney Tunes, then you will probably like The Willoughbys. It's got an all-star cast of, uh, let's see, Maya Rudolph, Terry Crews, Jane Krakowski, Martin Short, Will Forte, Alessia Cara, Ricky Gervais, who also serves as the narrator and the executive producer. He voices a cat. Uh, so The Willoughbys, I watched that. Uh, didn't watch a movie Wednesday. Watched a film on Thursday that comes out on Netflix this week called Uncorked. Uh, this is a film about a young man very interested in wine and becoming a wine uh, connoisseur, a big expert in the, in the world of wine. Um, Courtney B. Vance and Nishi, Nisi Nash play his parents. Uh, this comes out on Friday. Again, I'm embargoed on opinion until Friday when I put out my rapid review. Um, but um, there's some interesting stuff that goes down with Uncorked. Uh, Father-son relationship storyline is at the heart of the movie. If you're into those, you'll probably like Uncorked. Then on Friday, and it's not really Sideways. It's, it's you know, there's romance in it. There's comedy. It's a little bit different than, than what Sideways was. Um, all right, Dolphin Reef. I watched this Friday night. Disney Nature's new documentary. It was originally supposed to come out two years ago as Dolphins. And even Owen Wilson was supposed to narrate it. Um, but the Disney Nature decided to pull it from theaters and said goodbye to Owen Wilson. Instead, they brought in Natalie Portman, Academy Award winner for Black Swan, to narrate. And it is now called Dolphin Reef. Because it's not just about... Uh, Echo, the, the bottlenose dolphin, and his mother. It's about all these creatures uh, in the Pacific Ocean. Um, and uh, there's a mantis, and there's there's all these kinds of fish, and orcas, and sharks, and whales, all, all in this story of Dolphin Reef. Uh, again, I'm embargoed on opinion until next Monday the 30th. But if you're stuck at home, especially young kids uh, out there, if you're stuck at home and... You're, you know, you're having school on your computers now through programs like Zoom. I'm seeing a lot of that now. This would be a nice science lesson for you. You know, see if you can get your teachers. And if, if you have Disney Plus, when it's on Disney Plus April 3rd, you know, it's a nice exploration into that. A good science lesson. An hour and 15 minutes. Watch Dolphin Reef. You'll be entertained and you'll learn some stuff too. Uh, but I'll get into more of my thoughts on that next week. Uh, with Dolphin Reef. And then last night I watched a film called Vivarium, which is on VOD this Friday, March 27th. It stars Jesse Eisenberg and Imogen Poots. Now, Jesse Eisenberg has two, count them, two movies coming to VOD this week. One is called Resistance. Uh, he plays Marcel Marceau, the mime. And the other movie is this one, Vivarium, which I watched last night. It is a sci-fi film. It's hard to describe. It's hard to get into, and I won't share my opinions quite yet on it. Uh, other people have seen it, but I'm going to hold my opinions back. But it is, um, if you like, 
Truman Show, Edward Scissorhands-esque, but there's some different sci-fi sci flavor going into it. So that, that's kind of all you need to know when it comes to Vivarium, and I'll share more of my thoughts on it this week uh, on the Too Fast, Two Films podcast, and I'll have a review for it as well. If you got to listen, listen to the latest episode of the Too Fast, Two Films podcast, because Mike Sargent and I talk about the impact of the coronavirus on the movies and the movie industry, and he shares a story from a, the last screening he got to go to of My Spy, which is one of these films in limbo right now, uh, he got to see a screening of it, and something went down at that screening. You're going to want to hear about that. Go to TooFast2Films.com for the latest episode of the Too Fast, Too Films podcast. And um, uh, we're going to be reviewing, uh, starting this week, two films on streaming or VOD every week. Whether it's these films hit Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, uh, HBO. Uh, there's a lot on the way, actually, in the next month, month and a half. Uh, maybe even some network television movies, depending on what what comes down. You know, we're going to be reviewing all the big streaming films and the big VOD films you're going to want to watch because that's where the movies are headed. Trolls World Tour is coming to VOD on April 10. Uh, it's a big deal. The Lovebirds with Kumail Nanjiani and Issa Rae. Paramount was supposed to release it in theaters April 3rd. They pulled it. It's now heading to Netflix. We'll find out when that release date is. Should find out that news pretty soon. You know, a lot of big stuff is happening. Just because there aren't movies in theaters doesn't mean that there aren't movies coming out. There are tons of movies coming out. You just got to look for them and find them on your pay-per-view, your VOD, Apple TV, you know, whatever you got. There are so many movies on the way. And these little movies from these little studios that need a voice, need an audience, are now going to use VOD and pay-per-view as, as a platform to say, here we are. You're stuck in your house. Give us a shot, and we're going to tell you whether they're worth watching or not. So, uh, new episodes of Too Fast, Two Films. Uh, Movies Will Never Die this Future Canon, and Mike Sargent and LCJ, the new Siskel and Ebert. Hey, we doing our thing, you know, with the Too Fast, Two Films podcast, plus the Back to You podcast. We're right now, it's day seven of the Doing It Again marathon. For all the episodes, for the links, go to uh, at Back to You Pod on Twitter. And Friday, April 3rd, a week from this Friday, the brand new special one-year anniversary episode of the Back to You podcast. Going to talk about all kinds of stuff. You are not going to want to miss that. Plus, I'm still interviewing lots of animation filmmakers and voice actors and directors and writers and producers over at animationscoop.com. A cool animated short called The Wheel Turns is debuting this Wednesday on Vimeo. I interviewed the director of that, and you can find that right now at animationscoop.com. More to come this week. Steven Universe Future is ending. But I've got, I watched the final four episodes. I know what happens at the end of Steven Universe Future. Of course, I'm not going to give it away, but I know what happens. And I'm going to have my, my thoughts on that uh, this week at animationscoop.com. Lights, should I pay to stream Emma? You know what, Wolf Party Joe? I actually just uh, emailed the folks at Focus Features. Maybe, the fingers crossed, they might actually send me a screener of Emma because I didn't get the chance to see Emma when it came out in theaters. It came and went fast, and I'm hoping now maybe I'll watch it to let you know if you should watch it on VOD. That's one of the ones I'm waiting on. Uh, waiting on some other movies as well. Hoping to watch the new Hugh Jackman HBO movie, Bad Education, maybe this week. Fingers crossed, HBO's been great. Uh, we'll see what happens. That comes out on April 25 on HBO. Really looking forward to that. It's Hugh Jackman, Allison and Janney, Ray Romano. Uh, great cast. Got some great buzz when it premiered at some film festivals earlier uh, over the past year or so. Uh, yeah, Bad Education. Really looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, it's going to be good. I hope it's good, Future Canon. I really, really do. Um, so, Quiet Place Part 2 was supposed to be in theaters this weekend. And uh, this weekend coming up, it was supposed to be Mulan. What is Disney going to do? What's Paramount going to do? Where are they going to put these movies? Now, because Disney Plus has put Onward early on uh, digital, and then it's going to come to Disney Plus on April 3rd, same day as Dolphin Reef, is Disney seriously considering putting one of their upcoming theatrical releases on Disney Plus? I've had this gut feeling for a while that it's either going to be Artemis Fowl or Jungle Cruise. And because The Rock and Emily Blunt, it's the star power of Jungle Cruise in a big movie... I don't know. My gut says that Artemis Fowl will end up on debuting on Disney Plus because it will not open in theaters May 29. Look, what is Warner Brothers going to do? Wonder Woman 1984. Is it going to go to streaming or not? Is the Scooby-Doo movie, which comes out first for Warner Brothers on May 15, going to go to streaming pay-per-view VOD or not? 
The SpongeBob movie is supposed to come out May 22. If Paramount has this great relationship with Netflix now with the Lovebirds, would Paramount consider putting the new SpongeBob movie on Netflix? That would be unbelievable. You know how many people would want Netflix even for 30 day free trial just to watch the new SpongeBob movie with their kids? Whoa, you're talking big stuff right there. Um, yeah, we will see. Will any small theaters go out of business because of the virus? <sighs> it's tough to say right now. Everything keeps changing. You know, there's so many theaters closing and, you know, I think the drive-ins will survive because the drive-ins are doing really well, especially on the West Coast. I wish they were open here on the East Coast. I wish they were open here in the state of New York. I don't know what's going to happen with that as of this point, but they're doing really well over in California right now. Um, I think they got to hold on. I think they really got to hold on. You know, this thing may end. Today is what? March 22? By June 22, this thing may end. Maybe. Maybe it'll even be sooner than that. It just got to gotta hold on. What's that Wilson Phillips song? Got to hold on um, and wait and see. I, I hope they don't. I hope all these small businesses, you know, don't go out of business, don't have to go out of business. But we're in a tough situation right now. Uh, I'm in a regal town and a bow tie cinemas town, a little bit of landmark and all that, but the closest AMC to me is, is a couple hours away. Have you seen the financial reports from AMC? Oh my gosh, they're in like millions, billions in debt. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, you know, theater chains are in an interesting place right now because of the coronavirus, but things just keep evolving and changing. We'll have to see. For the time being, studios have got to take advantage of the streaming platforms while they have them. Quibi is launching in a couple weeks. I hope HBO Max and Peacock get going because they would do big things right now. We'll see what happens. Friday, uh, Making the Cut. It's the new Tim Gunn, Heidi Klum show. They reunite after Project Runway. It premieres on Amazon Prime. If you're a fan of them, this should be big starting Friday on Amazon Prime Video. All right. So... What movies will get delayed this week? What movies will be announced going on a streaming platform? Every day there's something going on. You know, some people have been asking me, oh, what are you, what are you doing now because the movies aren't in theaters? There's still so much happening. There's so much news happening because of what's going on with where these movies are going. And there's so many movies because of all these little films yet with big stars and semi-big studios and they're getting out there on an equal platform. It's actually pretty good because... You know, some of these small movies that they just opened in two theaters in New York and two theaters in L.A., and that was it, and they didn't get a huge distribution and may not have come to your town. Well, guess what? They are coming to your town now because they're coming to your TV. Everybody's got an equal chance of making an impact now. Some of these movies may do better on VOD than they would have just opening in a handful of theaters. We'll see what happens. That's what I keep saying, but it's the truth. It is the truth, and I'll keep you here for it right here on LCJ Live every Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern for as long as we possibly can. I think we'll keep it on going. Absolutely. Because, again, there's so much going on. As always, follow me on Twitter at LCJ Reviews, Instagram at Lights Cam Jackson, Facebook, Lights Camera Jackson, Jackson Murphy, YouTube.com slash Lights Camera Jackson, and that website is lights-camera-jackson.com. There's a lot of TV stuff happening as well. I'll keep you up to date on all that. Check out my social media and the website for more. I got a John Hamm blog on the website. Why is he better than ever? I tell you on the website right now. I'm Lights Camera Jackson. Thank you for watching this episode of LCJ Live. If you're stuck in your homes, stay safe. Stay positive, stay healthy, we'll get through this. It's almost April, it's spring now, the weather is hopefully going to get better, and maybe, maybe, this whole coronavirus thing will soon, fingers crossed, just go away. I'm LCJ, thanks for watching LCJ Live, bye-bye.